Hello my lovelies. Welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. In this video I'm going to be sharing some of my recent makes with you. It's been rather a long time since I shared a recent makes. I have to say that I'm over the moon with some of the things that I've been making recently. I really put that down to the work that I'm doing over on Patreon where I'm working ahead of myself and being really considered and intentional. Then doing Me Made May where I wanted to refine the joy in my handmade thrifted wardrobe. And also I've been keeping this sketchbook scrapbook which I may have shared here, you may have had glimpses of. And that's kept me very very focused and all of my makes very considered and it's just meant that I've ended up making pieces for my wardrobe that really work and surely that is the point of a handmade wardrobe. in with the dress that I am wearing hot off the sewing machine hot off of Bertha I sewed this one on my Benina this is a vampire's wife style dress and in May over on Patreon I focused on the vampire's wife dress so how to pattern cut the bodice with the French dart which gives it the pointy boob shelf look and the proportions because when you're making clothes wearing clothes, looking at clothes, whatever it is you're doing with clothes, a really important thing as well as fit is the proportion of a thing and something can fit you but the proportions are out and it looks quite funny and I think one of the reasons why the vampire's wife style or the vampire's wife dress which is essentially a classic fit and flare design style works so well is because of the proportions so we took a deep dive into that over on patreon and i made a few vampire's wife style dresses that i really love so this is a, a copy of the falconetti style it's a rose and hubble cotton i shared this fabric along with a few others that i've used in my recent london trip fabric haul which i shall linky link link somewhere and you can have a little look at some of the fabrics if you care to so this i have literally just finished and i love it i am going to give this a vampire's kiss because a vampire's kiss is even more amazeballs than a chef's kiss the next vampire's wife style dress i made was this blush pink one and actually this fabric which is a vintage fabric and I shared that in another video so there'll be another card somewhere with um, a, another fabric haul. We all know right that when you love fabric it can be a problem. Anyway I made this one as well exactly the same bodice as this but I did a different pattern cutting tutorial for for this and I do a 30 sleeve which I really love and I took my patrons through how to pattern cut that and I also did this um, like I called it the vamp sleeve but one of my very clever patrons renamed it the sleeve of vampulosity because I quite often call sleeves sleeves of fabulosity and she came up with that so there is also a tutorial for this one which is a sleeve of vampulosity and this is a very long floor sweeping style of dress and I just feel incredible in this one. The fabric is a little bit see-through and I do actually have to put the shoulder poofles in because I I pad them, make these special shoulder poofles to keep your poofle erect you see because you don't want a flaccid poofle. 
so actually I do need to sew those into this one but this one I haven't worn it out and about yet uh, we're heading into the summer here which kind of almost means nothing in England because we can have whatever weather but um, I really am looking forward to an occasion to, to waft around in this being enigmatic. My third Vampire's Wife style dress is this one in a faux liberty. It's actually a Rose and Hubble cotton poplin. And it's just exactly the same as this dress. And absolutely love this. I've worn and worn and worn this so much because although it's a dress that covers you up, the fabric's nice and cool and it's more likely to get sort of clammy and humid here than it is to get sunny and sort of hot. So this dress has been fantastic and I even would just wear it with flip flops and wander around like that on a lovely summer's day. So these will not be my last Vampire's Wife style dresses. I've got a few more that I'm thinking about making. And um, if you want to have a go at pattern cutting your own, then the Patreon link is below. The next couple of makes I actually did videos on. So if you do come and spend time with me in my little cottage by the sea, you would have seen both of these. So this is a full circle skirt here made out of this pink vintage um, jacquard and I'll pop a link for this one should you want to follow along. I used my own circle skirt pattern cutting and sewing guide for this and I used couture techniques to construct the waistband and um, absolutely love this. One thing that I would say though is when you're using vintage fabric, so when you do a circle skirt, I mean general practice is before you hem things you should let them hang so that the fibres relax and then you can level off the hem and hem. We don't always have time for that to be honest but I did actually leave this for overnight at the very least but what you sometimes find with vintage fabrics is that the fibres themselves are destabilising. I mean the, this fabric is probably about 90 years old now as we speak and um, it has actually sort of gone a little bit unleveled that's probably not the word for it I actually don't mind too much I should probably be really really scrupulous about these things but it doesn't detract from how much I love this skirt if it becomes a major major problem then I will undo all the bias binding because I did a like a a bias bound um, hem which was all hand sewn so you can imagine full circle took rather a long time. I'm not terribly bothered about things like that. I just think say la vie if you're enjoying the thing that you're wearing even if it isn't the most perfectly made as long as you're happy then whatever anybody else thinks really doesn't matter. The second thing that I actually made a video on is this 1930s blouse it's just a a replica, a copy, a reproduction of a, an authentic 1930s blouse card etc. Um, it's got these lovely little heart pockets and I covered the buttons and this was taken off of a pattern that I had actually done for Patreon which fits perfectly. They are exactly the same size but on this one there's like a little bit of um, pulling across the bust. It's a bit strange because I have actually lost a little bit of weight because I've been hula hooping uh, for funsies rather than weight losses. Um, and yeah there's like a little bit of a gapage here but what I think has happened is where I've lost a little bit of weight and my bras need updating really quite urgently. But shh don't tell anybody between me and you. Basically where the buttons are they're sitting in a funny place with this bra that's not really fitting me so as you may or may not know if you hang around here in my little cottage by the sea I'm working on my project lingerie so I'm redoing all of my lingerie creating all handmade vintage inspired pieces and um, bras are sort of almost next on the list. Not quite next on the list because I am doing um, a 1950s waspy. Bras are definitely on the way so I'm gonna have a play around and see if that's the thing that's the issue because there's actually no logical reason 
why when both blouses are exactly the same measurements this one gapes slightly and the other one doesn't sometimes that can happen because of the density of the fabric this is a liberty tarn lawn and although it's um a lightweight cotton a lawn cotton it's actually very densely woven and that's why you get the really lovely sort of the thread count you know when people say with bed linen that something's a you know egyptian cotton whatever thread count that's to do with the the density of the weave which can when using very beautifully soft um cotton threads creates a very smooth and sort of slightly sheened surface and um cotton lawn or liberty print cotton lawn can do that so what that can mean is that those fibers are a little bit less giving than something else that's got a slightly looser weave which means things like you know how something fits over those stress points can look slightly different that may be the most boring thing that i have ever told you but it is pertinent but love this blouse love the um print which i recycled from a dress that um i was uh, not wearing that had gone wrong and just think this is so super 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 pretty and pink uh really loving my color palette um with all these recent makes so um yeah we'll be wearing this a lot and hopefully better scaffolding will solve the problem bear with me bear with me so the last couple of things three things can't count i'm going to talk about together because i wore these um together in a little um styling video for my patreon because this first thing whoops banging about not following the rules of making a good video i'm sorry um this is actually the latest june's project over on Tara Stitch Coven on Patreon and it's a dirndl style top it's actually a sort of a replica I say sort of it is a replica of an Yves Saint Laurent top and it's this dirndl style with this sort of laced up detail a little peplum and I've lined it in a vintage Liberty print um really really love this I'm just in the sort of progress of doing the sewing video that goes with the pattern cutting video and I'm making one of these in a white with a, a vintage 1940s, 1930s even, cotton inside. So I'll have a, a, a monochrome black and white interchangeably. Um, but really, really love this. That top, the Yves Saint Laurent top, has been like one of my favourite items of clothing forever. And I've never made it before. So I was really, really pleased to have made this. And then I wore it with, which is a revelation to me, and you may well laugh. I realised in Me Made May that one of the things that I just don't have, don't wear, are trousers. And I love the look of trousers. You know, Catherine Hepburn, Hedy Lamarr, Bette Davis, all those wonderful, glamorous 1940s silver screen goddesses in their very wide leg, loose trousers really really comfortable in the sunshine in the summer when you wear them with you know little espadrilles and little blouses like the one that i've just shown you i decided that i was going to deal with my issues with trousers and start to delve into the world of trousers i will be doing trousers over on my patreon but I joined Gertie's Patreon and I downloaded her Lucille trouser pattern because they really did look fab. I have been making the Simplicity, da 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 da, da can't remember what it is, and really like those, but because I'm a bit tummy-licious and they're very smooth over the stomach, they can kind of look like maternity trousers if you're having a bit of a sort of bloated day, which I quite often do have because of issues with gluten intolerance and so on so I gave these a go and I was skeptical because um, I pattern cut all my own things so I'm sort of going to other people's patterns not sort of dismissively but you know it can be hit and miss can't it if you're not making a pattern from something that is 
drafted from a bespoke block that you know fits you perfectly anyhow i'm going on about it but i made these ones so they don't look that spectacular because they're just they're a black twill a really nice drapey black twill and i freaking love them i think vampire's kiss to uh gertie for these particular trousers because they're a real winner lovely pockets and um I mean, everybody who likes vintage clothing, who's a Gertie fan, has probably made themselves a pair of these, but I just really, really love them. I've worn and worn them and got loads of compliments and they can be styled up in so many different ways. You can go really casual, you can go really glam. So they're a real winner. They're really simple to sew, really quite quick to sew. They do take up quite a lot of fabric. I've got two more fabrics that I want to be um using i want to make which you can just see sort of here so i've got these two this sort of raspberry color and this uh buff pink color i've uh, been reorganizing my fabrics so all of these have got um projects uh that i want to to do with them and then i'd also like to get some kind of creamy um yeah cream sort of linen and do a lovely pair that I can style up with sort of sailor things or even just monochrome but really really love love those real winner and then the last thing which I wore with all of these things is this little belt so I just have all these vintage mother of pearl and uh, celluloid um, belt buckles and I just used one of my ordinary belts for the dimensions and some quilting cotton that I had left over I've actually got a circle skirt in this and I've just cut out a little sort of sun top to go with it and basically um yeah so I'm going to be making and I like to style it up the Dame Vivian Westwood way because she always did her belts like this and I always think that it looks really really lovely so i'll be making quite a few more of these but looks great with the lucille trousers you just have to use your imagination here because obviously i haven't quite thought this one out so those are all my recent makes or really i should call this video recent makes or how many vampires wife dresses does one girl need but recent makes i hope that you've enjoyed having a little look at them I have to say that the comments that you lovelies leave are always such a pleasure to read, so heartwarming, lots of really lovely information, some of you share fabulous stories and I'm just so grateful that you not only take the time to spend the time with me here in my sewing room, my little cottage by the sea here in Hastings, but you also take the time to write such lovely words to me and it may take me a little while to get back to you, but I really look forward to reading all of those comments and I'm just so grateful that you subscribe and you support me in that way and if you haven't already subscribed and you've enjoyed this video and the kinds of things that I'm making then please do subscribe because it really helps me to continue to make videos that I really love to make and really enjoy sharing with you and if you want to come on over to Tara Stitch Coven on Patreon and see what we're getting up to over there and join in with all the sewing adventures then it would be really lovely to have you part of a little coven community it's a really lovely group of people over there and I really really enjoy putting together content for Patreon as well thank you so much for watching along all the way through to the end if you have and I hope that wherever you are in the world my lovelies you're keeping very safe and well and until next time, bye.